Hello, it's FS Derek here again, and uh, I'm inside the Beechcraft King Air B200, not the 2200 as I described it, I think, in the last video. Um, what I'm going to do is take it over to um, the Isle of Wight to um, Benbridge, which is a tarmac strip over there. We're on the ground at South End. What I'm going to do, um, in fact, I think technically we're on the ground at uh, Amsterdam at the moment so it's a good uh, time to show you really just how to set up your location so let's go to location select global airport and type in South End it comes out capitals don't know why and I'm going to go to the end of the south westerly runway um, because um, I don't really want to do the taxi because the taxiways at South End are a bit um, unfinished so let's just make things easy for ourselves set ourselves up on the runway it's still going to be cold and dark so we'll have to do a quick start up the hardest thing about uh, getting up in the air of course will be finding the light switch so this um, I'm genuinely get really getting back into the flight simulator now and I've been doing this since flight simulators were invented so it's you know I, I've been off it for a, for a year or two and uh, tried train simulators and uh, all sorts of RTS games Supreme Commander 2 war game is we always we, we play a lot but I'm really getting back into the uh, flight simulating and not at all uh, you know uh, and, and enjoying uploading the videos to YouTube the only trouble is that the one that precedes this assuming it gets uploaded has literally taken me 12 hours to upload it's about 8 gigabytes large because it was, I thought it was about 30 minutes long. It turned out it was about an hour and three quarters. <laughs> and um, at, uh, at the sort of the resolutions that I want to see them myself, they they um, they get very big. So um, and I've only got a quite a slow connection. I've got a 14 gigabits down, and uh, you know the usual the mandatory quarter gigabit up. Well, that's supposed to be symmetrical. So, but anyway, that's that's all by the by. Um, so we're on the um, ground at South End. So let's just get the plane started up. So I'll look up, and now you you won't be able to see anything, and don't worry because I can't see anything either. So what I'm going to do is just go over to what looks like the. I wonder if I press L, that do anything. See, then that would be too useful, wouldn't it? We want the we want the leftmost light switch. Well, I suppose really we want to want to put the battery on first, don't we? I mean, this is what do you do? What? <laughs> Where's my torch? <laughs> I'm sitting here in the plane. I'm absolutely black screen, absolutely black. And that is the uh, controls. The only thing I'm I'm going to do, and that's only because I don't really know. Um, how to do anything about this is I'm just gonna have to set it to daylight and then and then flick that switch so we put the right time on and then uh, and then go down to the uh, there we are and put put the battery on and then uh, we need to go up to the overhead and this is the switch I was looking for here to put the lights on so now I'll go back to um, environment date and time and we'll take off in the dark and uh, should be there we'll make it an early morning flight so let's just yeah yeah we're still right we're dark out there now but at least we've got a bit of light inside haven't we so if you remember the sequence is uh, starter on you can hear that start to spin up that's the uh, number one left hand engine and we just watch that spin up and the lights we can turn down a bit are this one and this one. There we go. And so once we've got that on, we'll put the generator on. Watch the needles spin up. You don't want to turn the start on. You probably can turn the start off because technically it's started. So uh, I'm not too bothered about that now. So let's put the starter on, on the right hand one. and give it a bit of start up fuel 
<clears throat> the condition lever is very unfamiliar to most people who don't fly twin and basically it's a sort of a very very low level throttle it just controls put, allowing a tiny bit of fuel through into the engine so really what what condition it's in apart from the fuel cutoff because if you pull it right back it cuts the fuel off but whether it's in low idle or high idle really just governs the idle you know how how fast the engine's idle when the throttle's not engaged or the power lever as they call it so let's um let's tidy up so we want the um starter off for number two and the generator on and now we can turn the avionics on and we can start turning the lights on that's the, it's the middle one the ice that's the nav that's the recognition lights that's the beacon and that's the strobe good okay and because I'm a bit um, leery about the Icing. I'm going to put the pitots on as well. Although the temperature, I think, is uh, 16 degrees. You can just see it there on the on the left-hand side. See that? 16 degrees just there. So we're all right. We've got uh, again. We've got 700 pounds of fuel on board uh, in each tank. Let's press F4. Uh, not F4. Uh, four on the keypad. Seven on the keypad. And that's us pretty well started up. Look, you can see we've got all the greens there. So, have we got the ignition on? No, the ignitions are off. That's it, the master power is on. Yes, I mean, it's just simple, isn't it? I'm worried about the fact that I haven't got anything turned on. Now, I'm going to try again to file a flight plan, and what I want to do is go down to Benbridge. So, let's press Enter, file a flight plan, and we're going from Echo Golf Mike Charlie, which is South End. I'm going to climb right up, so our altitude is going to be 20,000 feet this time we're going to be going to Bembridge which is Echo Golf Hotel Juliet and the route will be Detling DT and then let's say Mayfield M-A-Y and then uh, Goodwood GWC and then Goodwood will then go, we'll go across the uh, Solon. So let's file that. Um, now we want to um, tune into South End, which we know is 119, is it 11922 or it might be 127. I need to make a list of these. Let's have a look. One. Well, it's got 130.775 on my map, so I'm using an old map here. So, and that's the lower airspace radar. Not, not exactly the tower, but I, I seem to remember we swapped them over, didn't we? So let's just try and see if we can find this flight plan anyway. Here we are. Request a clearance. November 6, 2, Niner, Juliet, call. Cleared IFR to Echo, call. Hotel, Juliet, as filed. Maintain 15,000. Clock 4700. Right, that's a squawking 4700, zero zero, and we're cleared to 15,000, which is cleared IFR to our initial Golf, departure Hotel, clearance, Julia not the 20,000 we want, 1, but not bad. Squawk 4700, zero zero. November 6, 2, Niner, Julia, so let's uh, quickly dial 15,000 in there. Good. Now, uh, again, don't forget what I said about... Um, Putting the bug on the in the direction that you're flying. So I'll, and again, I'll show you how to do that. Well, it's just uh, three. I think I've got program. Let's get this thing out of the way. Now the trouble is you can't adjust this and look at the dashboard at the same time, which is annoying, isn't it? So what you've got to do is you've got to go in and then use that and then drag it across so you can see it there we are so that's about 
233 is about the direction because we'll be pretty well lined up on the runway because the computer's done that. So when we take off we are going to fly the heading bug, so put it in a climb to 15,000 and aim uh, for a climb speed of about 120 knots. So uh, we're about ready to go. So we're requesting November taxi. Six, two, niner, Juliet, call. Runway six, taxi via two, four. Hold short of runway six. Now that's a pain, isn't it? Because it's cleared us to the um, the opposite runway. Runway six, taxi via two, four. Hold short of six, November six, two, niner, Juliet, call. Now I'm going to have to try and try and get out of this <laughs> by moving us. And I don't think there's a slew mode. So there's only one way around this because if I. Yeah, let's just start taxiing down. Take the um, break off. Needless to say, you wouldn't do this in real life. There's a bug in. I know I keep saying that there are bugs and they turn out not to be bugs. November 6, 2, Niner, Juliet, call. Cross runway 6, hold short of runway 6. Okay, let's see if he knows what he's doing. Cross 6, hold short of 6, November 6, 2, Niner, Juliet, call. Yeah, so this bug is with the air traffic control, and what will happen is it will um, tell you to. Um, hold short of a runway, clear of crossing the runway to hold short of it and then as you come up to the holding point it will tell you that you are oh. is it trying to take us? See I didn't really want to do all this taxiing but I suppose we'll have to get around to it. I'll cut it out if it's um, unduly onerous. Yeah, so it tells you to hold short, and then as you come up to the holding point, it will then tell you that you're clear for takeoff. So what you do is you then taxi out onto the runway and take off, and then um, it then terminates your air traffic control because you breached your hold short clearance. So that's not, uh, you know, we're not 100% there yet with the air traffic control. Here we go, we're going down another pavement. I should have started on the apron, shouldn't I? Shouldn't have shouldn't have started on the runway. My own stupid fault. Nice how it bounces around on the grass though, isn't it? I mean that's exactly what you'd expect. The old controls are, are quite sensitive. What uh, used to be um in the, in the uh, early days of flight simulator you didn't have all these fantastic sidewinder joysticks and things like that the only joysticks you could get were were tiny they were literally five or six centimeters across they were like a square and out of the top they had a little stubby joystick sticking out it had no buttons or anything it was literally just a and they plugged into a serial port I think I don't think they had a USB and um, they were Far too sensitive. You couldn't uh, muck about or reduce the sensitivity. November there six, two, niner, Juliet, call. Runway six, clear for takeoff. Right. Now this is this is a classic because I've been cleared to hold short, and I've also been cleared to take off. Runway six, cleared for takeoff. November six, two, niner, Juliet, call. And it's telling me to turn right onto the runway. which is not 6 is it, that will be heading towards 2-4 so I'm just wait and see what happens what can you do, I'll just wait and see what happens so I'm not going to make the mistake of taking off this way because that would be uh, that would be incorrect And also, I've got to change the heading bug round, haven't I? So I wonder if I can do that while I'm taxiing. Oh, I've got one finger on the heading bug, and one finger on the. It's not. Uh, 
let's not go over the approach lights now I definitely had clearance to take off then didn't I and it's so annoying because if you take off and, and you lose your um, your en route clearance then uh, you either have to fly it manually or start it all again or, or get another clearance you know anyway here we go let's not overstretch the engines that's about 2100 on the torque is fine and we're looking for a climb speed of about 120 knots up goes the gear because we're not going to land again on this runway Oh, he's not shouting at me, is he? Which is good. So, let's do what we said. I'm going to engage the autopilot, fly the heading, November and put it in six, the line. Two, niner, Juliet, call. Contact center on 135.95. I put it in quite an aggressive climb because um, we want to keep the noise down. Let's read back. Contact center on 135.95, November 629, Juliet, Golf. 135.95. It would have been quicker to have come down, wouldn't it? Come on, that's it. And then again, come down 135.95. So, swap over. November six right. two niner Juliet call. Are you with me? Center November six two niner Juliet call. November six two niner Juliet call. You're off course. Yes. November six two niner Juliet call. You're off course. Okay. Well, we won. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call, Echo, call, Mike, Charlie, altimeter 3066. 3066, okay. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call, you're off course. 6, <laughs> yes, I'm well. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call, you're off course. Let's just zoom in and set the altimeter. 3, 0, did you say 3066? Okay. That's another thing we should have said before. The the um, the thing is, obviously, with, with the altimeter, you would have normally... Um, we want Detling, which is 117.3. Let me just fly the plane first. Hang on. No, let's... let's uh, that's it. 117 decimal. And we swap those over, and we tell it to. Uh, well, it could, it can, you can fly on the, the localizer. Uh, so let's get the autopilot. November six two nine Juliet golf. You're off course. Now, what direction is it telling me to go? November six two just nine tuning this Juliet golf. Here. You're off course. Okay. <coughs> November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call. You're off course. Yeah, well, you're not being very helpful, if I'm going to be quite honest with you. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call. You're I'm off course. I'm trying to uh, turn right, and it's not doing it, so I'm going to just do a quick and dirty solution, which is to... November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call. You're off course. There we are. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call. You're off course. Now, at least we're going towards Detling now. I mean, we may not be on the the, the direct line between where we were and Detling, but we are at least now. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call. You're off course. But want to find out where the line was or is. Uh, it may be on here. No. Okay. So, let's go direct. Yeah. Uh, yeah, let's go direct. I don't want to activate it. No. 
want to go back here and put somewhere else in. So, not K. D. E. T. Detling. Activate. Now, if we look there, we'll see. There we are. Now, what we can do is we can tell the plane to fly down the GPS line now. So, but that's where we started, Mike Charlie. So you can see how far we went off course. <laughs> no wonder he's upset. Um, and in fact, what I can now, perhaps I'll put in the rest of the flight plan now. Uh, I'll try and get some light on these knobs by turning up the the flood and the instrument lights and let's not neglect the flying of the plane because we're still climbing at 140 which is fine that's absolutely fine that's exactly what we want but look at the torque you see how much that's dropped down so we should have really been pushing that forward shouldn't we keeping that up as we've we've gone up And we're expecting that to level off. So 2,000 feet is not a bad climb rate, is it, for this plane? It's pretty sensible. The um, thing about these fast planes is they climb slowly, they cruise pretty quickly, but they come down like a rocket. So although you may think, well, why, you know, you know, we could probably climb at 180 knots, or why don't we climb at 200 knots or something, and sort of put it in a more of a shallow climb, only perhaps climb 800 feet a minute. The answer is that we want to get up to the thin air quickly, and uh, any time we waste now climbing up uh, this this like a snail is going to be more than compensated by the fact that we'll be up there longer and we're going to come down like a rocket so you gain you gain all the time you lose climbing descending if you see what i mean so we we're going to put the next waypoint in weren't we and we're going to push to get the cursor and then we're going to go down to the approach and then see if we can clear that remove the approach ILS yes please so after Detling we said we were going to Mayfield didn't we 117 decimal 9 so let's do KLM A and then I'm going to go backwards to Y it's a bit of a cheeky trick and then uh, from Mayfield we were supposed to be going to Goodwood GWC so we go back G and then back to W doing this with my mouse and ABC enter accept good so that's us coming up on 15. It comes up quickly, doesn't it? Like, it doesn't show any signs of slowing down until it's ready to slow down, and then it slows right down. So let's go back to now and find out. Well, we're coming up to Detling, and you can see the next leg there. So we're pretty well, you know, we've, we've programmed ourselves all the way there now. Look. There we are. So there's Seaford, and there's Goodwood, and then we're going to be going down here, so it's not too far away. So flight plan. So uh, let's just take the cursor down a bit. Do, do, do. And then, so here, we're going into, what did I say, Echo Golf. Oh, I'm going to crease in the map. Echo Golf Hotel Juliet. So. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet Golf. Climb and maintain 15,000. Let me lose my concentration. Hotel. Juliet. Enter. Accept. Good. Let's put him away. Where's the lights gone? The lights have gone out. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet. Golf. Climb and maintain 1, 5,000. on dark. Oh, this is mysterious. 
November 6, oh, 2, okay. 9, Juliet, call. Climb and maintain 15,000. Yeah, okay, read back transmission. I'm in the Up dark. Up to 15,000, November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call. I think I've got the um, sunglasses on. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, call. Descend and maintain no. 11,000. Send and maintain one one thousand. What's that all about? Let's have a look outside. Mind your ears. November six two oh. nine -er, Juliet call. Descend and maintain one one thousand. They will come on again. Down to one one thousand. November six two nine -er, Juliet call. One one thousand. We've only just got up here. What are you on about? Okay. Descent. Throttle back a bit. We don't want to overspeed anything. We can turn the landing lights off. Oh, that's very strange. Everything's gone dark. Go inside again. Go inside again. Now. Right. Altitude warning. ALT warn. What's your warning about? Or is that the altimeter warning? Let's get rid of this and go and have a look at some switches. Could be the alternator warning. But it's the alternators packed up. Well, it would account for the lights going dim. But I don't have any failures turned on on this plane. Equipment failures. Everything's always working. Aircraft, yes. Instruments, yes. I wonder if the alternator will be down under the engines. Engines. Failures. Nothing. Sure, that's dark. Nothing. 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 Nothing should fail on this. Reset all. Allow random failures. No. Reset all systems to operational. Give me back my lights. I've still got the alternator warning light coming on. Probably just as well I'm going down to 11,000 in that case. Let's just finish off um, setting this. See, we can't get it on 11,000. We can get it on 1150 and 10,950. Okay. Now, we never, we never coursed the angle on the props, so we don't need to find the props because we're descending. Let's have a quick look and see where we are. We're going to be quicker, quicker than I thought. I thought we'd, we'd be there. I thought the sun would be coming up when we got there. But oh no. Let's see, uh, choose how we're going to get in there. See when we get there. Right, oh, there's no approaches. So, we'll just have to do a visual. What have we got in the way of information? One, two, three, two, five. No one's going to be there this time in the morning. What's the point of having a elevation fifty four? November six, two, two nine, two, Juliet, call. Descend and maintain seven thousand. One, two, three, two, five. Down to seven thousand. November six, two, nine, Juliet, call. Right, that's that pretty well done. <clears throat> and we want um, two five, so let's go up to two five. Right. That's ready for um, when we get a bit closer. Let's zoom in a bit.
bit. Whee. So we're coming up to Mayfield, which is the corner of Gatwick, actually. You see that? Echo Golf Kilo Kilo, that's Gatwick. Cooker. Lolo is London, Heathrow. And uh, I think Susa is Stansted. So, how far away are we from that? Three miles. So let's just watch it change. You'll see that this is the current leg, and it will automatically move on to this as the next leg. And then we'll be expecting a turn to the right, won't we? So, let's assume that we'd make a turn to the left. We'll, we'll, be, um, we'll be worried about that, wouldn't we? That alternator light's gone out now, look. I wonder what that's all about, then. Come on then, change, Ch -ch -ch changes. There we go. And now watch this for a turn to the right. Not a dicky bird. Holy moly. Because we were flying on a heading. Should have been flying on the nav. There we are. So now we're turning to the right. Now I don't want you to think that the sky is full of people like me flying extremely heavy aircraft and hanging on by their fingernails not having a clue what they're doing it's true but I just don't want you to think that so take no notice of, take, no, take no notice of me I wouldn't dream of flying a plane like this on my own <laughs> without a qualified pilot even though this is the largest aircraft that you can fly single solo so I could technically I have got a, the license to fly this plane on my own if I wanted to but I don't because flying is about not being mad isn't it it's about not it's not it's, it's risky enough without being risk risk prone you know without being a risk of file <coughs> So we're on the uh, Mayfield to Goodwood leg now, and uh, got about 29, 28 miles to go. Now, for those of you who you know like the mental arithmetic, and there's a lot of it in the plane, you can work out how long we're going to take to get there. This I know it says it down there, but <clears throat> um, a knot is a nautical Hill mile a minute. Six, two niner Juliet golf descend and maintain three thousand. That's my friend. Here he is. Down to 3,000, okay. November 6, 2, Down Niner, Juliet, golf. There we go. 3,000, it's done it. Actually, it said 30.30.66, uh, didn't it, up here for the, um, for the barometric pressure, so I should have actually dialed that in. That's why I've got it up there, so I can see what the barometric pressure is. We're still we're going a bit too fast now because the air's thicker down here, so we need to really um, wind our necks in a bit here. This is ridiculous. November six two niner Juliet golf echo golf kilo alpha altimeter two niner three one two niner three one. That's a massive difference, isn't it? Look at that. Oh. I mean, in real life, you would not get a massive difference Echo, like that. Echo, golf, kilo, alpha, altimeter, two, niner, three, one, well, You see November, as we're winding six, off the millibars. Two, niner, Juliet, golf. We're winding off the altitude, aren't we? So, if you're going from a high barometric pressure, or, or if you're using a high barometric pressure in a low barometric area, then you're in trouble, aren't you? Because really, you should wind all those millibars off, and in in the same process will wind wind off all the um, your height so you can be thinking that you're quite you know flying along at 5,000 feet quite happily but if your uh, your barometer is set too high you could be flying along at five feet you wouldn't know especially if you're not if you're in cloud or fog or something so the, the saying is from high to low beware below so remember that from high to low on the barometer on the pressure setting if you're flying from a high pressure setting to a low pressure setting, beware below. Because the altimeter takes its altitude setting off of the pressure that you're flying through. And if the pressure's falling, then the, effect, the, the pressure that you're following is going down into the ground. 
pressure drops as you rise, so you can be flying along at 10,000 feet at, say, a pressure setting of uh, 29.31, and then 100 miles away, 29.31 could be ground level. So high to low, but way below. So we're going down to 3,000 feet. Now I hope he doesn't give us any more de clearance, descent clearances because I'm gonna, we are going to be driving there along the ground, aren't we? But seeing as we've got some water to cover, wouldn't be all that clever. This is a nice trip. I tended to, um, that's the altitude warning telling us we're coming up on the altitude, so we feed a little bit of throttle back in because obviously we're going to slow down now, we're not descending. I used to land at Sandown, which is the, um, the grass strip and uh, uh, and not Benbridge. Benbridge uh, I think was a manufacturing base for helicopters and uh, had a lovely great big long tarmac strip which I think they used to you know for November private jets. November 6, 2, Niner, Juliet, golf, Y heading 2, 2, 0. Vectors for the visual, runway 3, 0. Climb and maintain 5,000. 2, 2, 0 and 5,000. Heading two two zero. Vectors for the visual. Runway three zero. Up to five thousand. November six two niner. Juliet. Golf. November six two niner. Juliet. Golf. Climb and maintain five thousand. Five thousand. Two two zero. Well, we're pretty well um, up to five thousand November heading two two zero at the moment. Niner, Juliet, golf. Now we're now we're having uh, radar vectors. I'll just make sure that we um, set that precisely. There we are, two two zero, and we're climbing up at eight hundred feet a minute because I'm not. Um, uh, yeah, I know it's exciting and good fun to getting radar vectors to go up and down and up and down and you think oh this is great I'm, I'm like a real pilot here but uh, you know you, you, you get vectors you get altitudes going up and then you get altitudes going down you wouldn't really get taken down to three and then up to five and not unless the red arrows were doing a fly pass for the queen or something So there we are. So we're humming along nicely in a climb to 5,000. We're flying 220 on the uh, heading. Uh, just occurred to me that we might not be on the actual heading. Oh, they must have some fun. Don't you think they have some fun, these guys, in the, watching their screens, watching you fly all over the place like flies in a bottle? They must think, oh, God, here's another one who doesn't know what he's doing. In my case, they'd be right, wouldn't they? Right. We're a long way away, so I mean, I appreciate him taking us in for the three zero. Let's have a quick look. So three zero is here. So basically, we'll be flying to the left of the runway and turning right onto it, which means we'll be coming in over the sea because it's a basically it's a sort of a east west runway isn't it and the uh, east of the edge of it's jutting out off the end of the Isle of Wight. The reason why I used to like doing this trip was because um, it cost quite a lot to take a car down here so from where I was in Kent it could take four hours to get to the uh, Isle of Wight and it cost you about £60 or £70 to get across the ferry and um, you know for the same sort of price you could take put four people in a plane and fly them down there in half an hour it was one of those trips that really, where being being a pilot really paid dividends. Breaking even compared to with a, a car trip is is a result in a plane because planes are almost always more expensive way of flying. Uh, you know, flying is always more expensive than driving. But um, if you could break even, in other words, do it for the same money as it would cost you to drive, then uh, you know why not take the plane and. The best way to do that is to go across water because you know if you fly from Kent or South End to Dunkirk or Calais or anywhere, Amsterdam, wherever, 
you'll be spending about the same sort of money. Plus you get a tax rebate on the fuel because any fuel that's crossed an international border becomes tax free which means that if you can prove that you've been to France um, you can claim back any tax you may have paid on the aviation fuel you put in the plane. And believe me, that was worth doing. If the uh, if the plane was full up, I think we had about 120 liters of fuel in each wing. So it was 240 liters. So you know, and this, uh, I only work on the basis that a pound it was a pound a liter tax. It's probably more than that. Uh, so you used to get a nice fat check. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't uh, keep hopping across the channel and keep claiming it. Well, you could if you used the fuel up. I mean, basically, if you could make a case that you'd used the fuel and that you'd put a load in, a new load of fuel in, then you could claim it again. But what I mean is, you couldn't like fly ten minutes across and back and then claim, and then ten minutes across and back and then claim for it all again. You know, they're not stupid. Dim, they're not stupid. Right, good. Well, I'm pleased because it does appear that the sun is uh, creeping over the eastern horizon, doesn't it? Which is nice. So um, we're in for a nice day sailing today. We've got a corporate event on. They're meeting us at Benbridge and uh, taking us to um, pick up our boat and then we'll be going sailing up and down the Solent. Actually, I was flying over the Solent once, and they had the um, regatta on, and uh, the Queen was there on uh, Britannia, which is the Royal Yacht. And next to the Royal Yacht, they had a Royal Destroyer. <laughs> you know, just in case anyone should <laughs> decide that they wanted to approach the Royal Yacht, and they had a Royal Destroyer next to it. And uh, I was flying over the top and got a lovely view of the boat and the destroyer until I realised that the destroyer's guns were following me round as I flew over. They literally, um, <laughs> they literally were swivelling, swivelling round. November six with me. two nine Juliet golf descend and maintain five thousand. That was a bit disconcerting. Down to five thousand. November six two nine Juliet golf. I suppose they were as poor as I was. You see some fantastic things from the air. Some some things you wouldn't even believe. Right. Let's uh, see how we're doing. So we want to know how far we are from uh, November six two nine or Juliet golf descend and maintain five thousand. Yes, 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 yes. I am at five thousand. You stupid. Down to five thousand. November six two nine or Juliet golf. November six two nine or Juliet golf. Y heading zero three zero. Descend and maintain two thousand. Zero heading three zero. zero three zero. Down to two thousand. November 2, six two nine or Juliet golf. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, golf, Y heading 2, 1, 0. Vectors for the visual, runway 3, 0. Descend and maintain 2,000. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, golf, descend and maintain 2,000. Now, he's taking the mickey a bit now, isn't he? Wouldn't you say? I think he is. It's a shame, really, because down to two thousand November six two uh, nine or Juliet golf. AIs would be brilliant if they worked, and if they don't work, really, they should be they should be simplified to the point where they do work. By which I mean, you know, I mean this thing doesn't do SIDS or stars, but it should do an on route clearance. It should just. It should do nothing rather than, than zigzag you all over the place. And this is precisely what the FSX uh, auto uh, air traffic control does, zigzags you all over the place, which I suppose is why people fly on uh, using November this. November 6, 2, 9, Juliet, golf, Y heading 1, 2, 0. Mm, I'm not going to do that. Sorry, mate. 
Heading 120. November 6 to Niner Juliet Golf. Right, I've cancelled the IFR flight plan. This is just um, this is just dark. So now we're stuck in the middle of the uh, the channel, aren't we? And we we don't know where we are, but that looks like land over there. So let's not panic because we're okay. They um, seem to be overspeeding slightly, so let's just cut the throttles back a bit. I'm going to fly at, um, I'm going to go down to 3,200 because I think 2,000 is a bit too low. Now we're just going to navigate our own way to Benbridge here, haven't we? So how are we going to do that? So what we want is some sort of nice non-directional beacon, don't we, on Benbridge? Have we got a non-directional beacon anywhere, anywhere in sight? Anywhere that would be useful? No. Not a dicky bird. What we can do though, we, this, we can use the GPS. So let's use the GPS. Okay. So we go here. We go to flight plan. We go down to there, we go to the menu, we activate that leg. We go to the, and we go to the nav. And we go to the flight plan, and put the range up. And this is why we can't, right, this is why we can't see any land, because we are, in fact, halfway to Jersey. So, let's just make sure we carry on flying, that's fine, and we're going to need to turn round aren't we, because basically it's up here, so any guess what direction we should be flying, yes, north. So we're following the GPS, we've activated that leg, we should be going to Hotel Juliet, we're flying on the nav, but we're not going north. So what should we do? Answers on a postcard, please. You do what you always do when the plane is not doing what it should be doing. You fly on the bug. And if we go back to the um, previous page, our desired track is 2.32. Well, no, that's the track from Goodwood to Echo Hotel. Right. Okay. Plan 6. Put in direct Echo Golf Hotel Juliet. Desired track 27 degrees. So. Change heading to 27 degrees and fly that on the nav and see if that works that's what I should have done so okay no it's fine we're still in the air I said I didn't want to land till the sun came up didn't I so what's your problem <coughs> fuel is cheap <laughs> in these flight simulators it is now what you can see there is uh, the Isle of Wight, there we are. Big island and home to I think three of the maximum security prisons in the UK. On the basis that uh, it would be quite difficult to get off the island if uh, you ever managed to escape. Although, someone did escape and guess what, they took a plane, tried to take a plane anyway I think, from Sandown smart move excellent way to get off the um, off the island so we're coming into Hotel Juliet 
and we're going to be want to be landing on runway three zero. So three zero goes if you imagine three hundred degrees on a scale of naught to three hundred and sixty. Three hundred would be up here somewhere, wouldn't it? So what we want to do is we want to come out this way a bit and then come round and then fly up it, don't we? Let's see if we've got any. Um, there we are. That's a. Uh, you can't uh, zoom in and out on that. This is supposed to be a sort of a copy of the Garmin uh, 430, and in in many respects it looks very similar and everything. And, and some of the screens are the same, but it doesn't have half the screens or the data, but um, you know, what do you expect? So there's the end of the runway by the look of it. There's something flashing green, isn't there? So I've got to assume that that's the beacon on the runway. I'll just double check that. Hotel Juliet, yes. That uh, runway there, I think, is Southampton. In fact, if we zoom up, that's Hotel Foxtrot, which is where's Southampton, Southampton, Southampton. No, it's Leon Solon. Anyway, the point is it's not uh, Bembridge, so that's the main thing. Now, the best thing to do, I think, for this is literally just to fly it manually. So I'm going to disengage the autopilot, throttle back a bit and start to make a gentle descent and a right turn. Let's put our landing lights back on. That's it, landing lights on. There's no need to descend too fast. Oh look, I think we're going to have a lovely sunrise here. Is it up yet the sun? No? No? It's not, is it? Won't be long though. It's funny though, because there's a reflection down there. Or well, perhaps it is up. Perhaps it's up and behind the cloud. Now we're down in the white layer, so we'll have one load of flaps down. If the flaps are down and the throttle's quite low, then the you'll get that rapid beep. That just means you don't have the gear down. Now what I would be doing, obviously, would be keeping an eye out. You can see the runway down there, can't you? Just over the top of the engine, so. Now what should we be flying if we're flying away from the runway? Well, if the runway is 30, it's on 300 degrees, so we fly the reciprocal. Which is 120. It hasn't taken me that long to work this out. So I've got a bit of a cough, so I'm quite considerately turning the microphone down in between coughs. Should be all right for a while now. So, watch the airspeed because if you don't, one day it'll kill you. And especially watch the airspeed on turbo props because they take a long time to spool up and down. So, you can't get yourself out of problems so easily just by jamming the uh, throttle forward. I think that's probably far enough, so I'm going to just do a gentle turn. And a gentle turn, you see this yellow banana here. If one of those wings is parallel with the uh, with the, the artificial horizon, that's about a 30 degree turn. Uh, no, it's about a 20 degree turn, isn't it? Each one of these gradations is 10 degrees, so you've got 10, 20, 30, 
45 and 60. You don't really want to get into a 60 scenario. And the other thing you can do is you can, you see I'm going down about 800 feet a minute, so that's represented by the how far the banana is underneath the white line. So if you keep the banana lined up and about that gap, then your um, rate of descent will be about right. So we're still too far over to the left, so I'm going to uh, just move this way a bit, have a quick up from there. I'll keep it in sight. I'm going to throttle down even more. And because we've started on the glide slope, now would be the time to lower the gear. So let's just lower the gear. Joystick button all G on the gear. Now we've got four whites. So in fact we're, we're far too high. So I'm going to just uh, trade a bit of altitude for speed. There we are. There's one red, there's two reds. So I feed the throttle back in. So I've literally just swapped some altitude there for some speed. So I've had to take the throttle off. And that's now got us on the right glide slope. We're still not quite lined up on the localizer. Not that there is a localizer, on well, centre line anyway. Good. Now we're all set up. So we didn't do any feeder checks. But I'll just do a quick bump fitch. So the brakes are off. Let's just check. Yeah. Undercarriage is down. Yeah, I've got three greens. Mixture and everything is fine. Fuel is on and we've got sufficient for a go around. And hatches and harnesses are fine. Everybody's uh, strapped in. And this trading off speed for altitude is important on the approach because let's say you're slow on the approach and you're about to stall. What 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 do you think you would do? Do you think you'd jam the throttles open or do you think you would you would dive? Now, you wouldn't think you would dive, would you, if you're worried about stalling and you're close to the ground. But in fact, you'll get the speed far quicker by diving. So what you do is you dive and you put the throttles. Well, you know, at the same time you open the throttles, but basically you dive. So you control your airspeed on the approach by climbing and descending. So if you're controlling the airspeed by climbing and descending, what, how, are you, how are you staying on the glide slope? And the answer is you do that with the power. Let's just sit myself up in the seat a bit here. I haven't put the final flaps down, but I will now. There we go. Now, that was a bit of a greaser, if you don't mind me saying so. Landed a bit long. But, very smooth. And, uh, just turn around and have a look at the, the rising sun. Nobody in the control tower. Not this early in the morning, there won't be. Put the brakes on. Let's just um, clear the old windscreen. It's always raining when I fly, have you noticed that? I don't, I don't do it that way. It just happens that way. Right, and we'll shut down. So remember, when you're coming in, control your airspeed with your uh, your pitch, pitch up and down to keep the airspeed correct. And if you're too low, add throttle. If you're too high, take away throttle. But you don't use the throttle con to control the airspeed, which is a bit of counterintuitive, isn't it? But that's the way it works. So just to make things a bit easier, let's just... Uh, what we're going to do, turn all the electrics off first. Uh, I think we can turn that off, can't we? Can 
probably turn that off. I can probably turn these off, but I won't. Um, yeah, so um, you don't really want to shock load the electrics when you're turning a plane off or, or um, putting it back on. In fact, one of the things about the plane that, that uh, you may or may not know is that the electrics are independent of the engine. So in fact, if I turn the uh, avionics, let's turn the avionics off because they're very sensitive. And then let's turn the generators off. And let's turn the batteries off. And that's it. The plane's completely dead and yet the engines are still running, look. It's not completely dead because it looks like the side panel is still illuminated. Let's just turn everything off. Off. Uh, perhaps it's luminous. Anyway, um, yeah. So, and that's a safety thing. That's so that you can have electrical failure, complete electrical failure in flight, and yet the plane will still keep flying. It's amazing, isn't it? And the way that you turn the engines off is you starve them with fuel. You can just about hear that winding down. And we pull this one back, start this one of fuel. Let's have a look from outside. Oh, they've left the flaps down. <laughs> Still, it's not the end of the world. What we can do, we'll just put the battery on. Get the flaps up. Turn the battery off. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's a little flight. I didn't get to fly as high as I wanted to. Thanks to air traffic control, which we had to switch off. Next time we'll have no air traffic control and we'll see how high we can get. Thanks for watching. Come back again soon. Bye.